On this Swiss machine, I'm gonna show you a macro program so genius that it not only threads, but comes back into the thread absolutely perfectly without leaving a blemish. And with one variable, I can change it from making a thread that's one inch long to 30 inches long. In a way, macros can be kind of tough to understand, but once you get them mastered, they can really make programming a lot easier for you. For example, you'll notice on this table, I went from making a four inch screw to a seven inch screw. That was done by just changing one number in my program. So here in my program, you can see, I have different macro variables and they all do different things. And I can do different equations to calculate my passes, my infeed, the angle in my infeed, pretty much whatever you want. And it's important to understand when we talk about macros that a macro variable can mean anything. You can have a macro variable be a tool call out, a spindle speed, whatever you want to simplify your programming. This is a little bit much to throw at everyone at first for macro programming, but it's good we get into this. In reality, it's the same parameters that you're putting into a threading cycle like G76 or G78 anyways. You can see here, some of them for example, like the thread minor, the thread pitch, or my start position for Z. All basic stuff. You can see as I scroll down, I start to do the math to calculate different things. So like for example, this one here, is just calculating the angle of my infeed for each pass, because I have to start at the exact spot in order to thread this the right way. If I were to be off at all with where I'm starting back up on these segments, the thread would have steps in it. So you have to start and stop in the exact same spot. Again, this is why macros make it a lot easier, because if you program this with just regular numbers and realize after you did all that work that your segments were too long or too short, well, now you have to go back and start completely over. Where with macros, I can just change one single number and then boom, my whole program's different. You could take this information and turn it into anything. That doesn't have to be a thread macro. It could be a tool change. It could be a part counter. It could be anything. Macros are, in my opinion, one of the most powerful tools on a CNC machine. One thing about segment threading that can be difficult is some machines can struggle to actually pick up the lead in the exact same spot where you left off for each segment. I was pretty surprised at how I put this macro in there and the parts came out good first try. You can see I ran the thread gauge over the part and there was no hiccups, no stickups whatsoever. That was without any adjusting. That was just straight up writing the macro and pressing start. So good job, Tornos, your machines rule. Now segment threading isn't really too common, only a few parts require it, but I figured it'd be a good way to show you why you need to do parts and segments on a Swiss machine. If you wanna see more stuff on macros, feel free to comment below, because I'd love to teach you more about macros. Hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day. <laughs>